so here we go. The the villains attack. Oh, what is that thing? Surprisingly. Has the training started already? Yes. Yes, it has. Stay back. <sighs> I'm very excited to this see Aizawa really in action. Those are villains. That's a lot of villains. It's a lot of villains. Perplexing. According to the schedule we retrieved from you, they're looking for all might. Should be here as well. Right. Maybe if I kill a few kids, they'll come out to play. Here we go. <laughs> we what the pro heroes are really up against. The darkness they face to keep us safe. Ooh. We looked at these villains, and pure evil stared back. Damn, episode 10, Encounter with the Unknown. I feel a little bit blindsided myself. I'm sort of with Deku on this. I was having such a great time with like school life and All Might and training and all that stuff that I just forgot that, you know, this is the other half of the equation, right? It's been really amazing to do these shows and to see the different approaches they have to depicting the world and depicting life and humanity. One idea that doing these videos has helped me come to is the idea that good shows are not just pastimes, right? They're not just entertainment. They are actually sort of guides to life in a way. I think fundamentally, they actually set out to answer some really big questions and challenging questions like, what is the meaning of life, you know, which is no small thing. How do I find purpose? How do I become the best person I can be? Things like that. And this is definitely a massive oversimplification, but I think one way to connect to life or to find something like purpose is to set ideals, you know, like set ideals for what kind of person you could be, not in circumstances, but in, in value and in things that we have control over, where in doing them, you would be someone that you admire and respect. But there's another side to that too, which is like, what are the worst things you could be? And I think with those two things in mind, you have something like a direction because you have something to avoid avoid and you have something to to strive for and another element of that is it has to be connected to reality right it can't just be something that you think up from the comfort of your your living room or whatever right it has to be something that actually works in the world and so i think that in shows they are impactful and meaningful when they do a great job setting a realistic and interesting view of reality and then giving the characters both sides of that like giving the heroes values that get them through the tragedy get them through the realities of life and villains who make mistakes who make them plummet to the bottom of that universe let's say and in that way shows inform my life because they give me ideas of those values and they help me reflect on them. But what's interesting is the direction they do them in. Like, for example, Avatar The Last Airbender starts way down here at this really low point and then builds out of it, right? Full Metal Alchemist also, it starts at this really, really low point. Like, humanity's terrible, everything is terrible, and then builds higher through values. Attack on Titan, you know, it starts at this really low point. My Hero Academia, on the other hand, it seems to have started sort of high. It's like we got the heroism first, but now the villainy's entering. It's an interesting feeling. It's the other way around that I'm used to. And it kind of scares me because I love these guys now. I love this world. What? Real villains? No way. How could so many You're of them in denial. Do a UA facility this secure? Yeah, 13. Why aren't the alarms going off? They've been planning this for a while. They've been very careful. But they've thought this out. Whatever their plan, they must have a concrete objective in mind. Yeah, and it seems like what it involved it? All Might. 13. Get them out of here. Damn, he's going to take them on by himself. Your power works best in stealth and one-on-one -on -one fights. True. You don't have enough toilet paper. You can't be a pro if you only have one trick. Ooh. To you, 13. Still teaching, even in a moment like this. <laughs> Hell yeah. Who's that? Don't recognize. Hmm. Aizawa's not one to seek the spotlight. I guess he's not famous. <laughs> Damn, that toilet paper power though. That's a racer head, a pro. There you go. Bet you can't erase the quirk of a heteromorphic type like me, can you? Yeah. What a sentence. <laughs> Nice. Since he's hiding behind those goggles, you can't tell whose quirk he's erasing. Oh, so you can only do one at a time? I guess you can only look at one person at a time. It helps that he's extremely athletic. The worst thing about dealing with pros is when they live up to all their hype. Yeah, I was about to say that. That's the best thing about this scene so far. I guess I shouldn't have underestimated him. This is no time to be analyzing. We have to go. When Ida says it's not time to be analyzing, you know this is a real crisis. No, but for Aizawa, I feel like that's that's the best thing they could have done for him at this moment, having him actually deliver. For some reason, that's the ultimate combo, right? Like stoicism, that might be the wrong word, but lack of exuberance or maybe reservedness with ultimate ability and power. And maybe because there's something so pure about that, someone who can do great things, but isn't flashy about it. It's instant trust. There's no fluff about Aizawa. He's consistent, as great and heroic as All Might is. I think people could let an attack on him, but he doesn't have enough of that reservedness. He does have the merch and the 
the media appearances and things like that. And some of that is strategic because he's a symbol. But I think a lot of the time it's difficult for us to separate. Somebody can be pure of heart and do great things and also have a media profile and have merchandise, right? But as an outsider who may not know the situation deeply, you can't help but wonder how each is weighted. But with Aizawa, you have no doubt because there is no other element. There is no spotlight. There is no money to be made for him, really, it seems. So he immediately seems pure and self-reliant and inwardly strong that that's all he needs, you know? He doesn't need approval. There's something really cool about that. That being said, it doesn't seem likely that he can do this forever, so something has to happen. It's a pleasure to meet you. We are the League of Villains. League of Villains, very creative. There must have been some sort of change in plans we could not have foreseen. You didn't foresee All Might's morning commute. Jumping right into it. Did you think we were just gonna stand around and let you Oh no, they're overestimating themselves. Seems like maybe a similar power to uh, 13. He must have a warping cord. What the heck? First catch of the day. Oh damn, he's already getting attacked. Oh yeah, she was talking about water, right? Yeah, speaking of delivering, nice. Thank you, Sue. Man, it'll be so cool if they actually can take this class or this this huge roster and make them fit and have places for them that, that feel right. There's so much potential. I just get the sense already that the show has a lot of love for its characters, which is great. It's very exciting. On another note, as Bakugo and the other guy, I don't know his name yet, were attacking, I was thinking that if this were real life, or it might happen in this show for that matter, not everyone's gonna make it just because you don't know the realities of something until you start doing it. On the outside, you just see the glamorous elements of it. You don't see the work, you know, you don't see the data danger, the risk, the pressure, etc. You can tell that a lot of the kids have the wrong idea of what this job is. All Might, in the beginning, in the very first couple episodes, represented that thing that I think a lot of them don't know yet, you know, that pain. And on some level, you can see different students' maturity levels about that same thing by their reaction to the villains attacking. Some of them probably think they're invincible, but that feeling can't last. For a frog, you've got some pretty big boobs, Sue. This kid! One track mind. Ah! Save my life, Asui. I told you to call, call her Sue, yeah, come on. Sue you, Asui. Her quirk, fraud. <laughs> That's pretty self-explanatory. They didn't really sugarcoat it, yeah. They knew our whole schedule and who would be here. Ooh, is there an insider? It's not like these guys can really kill All Might. Once he shows up, he'll pound these bones until there's nothing left. I appreciate the faith. Maybe we should worry more about not getting tortured to death. Otherwise, we might not survive long enough to see All Might again. I like Sue. She's got a good head on her shoulders. But also, this villain attack feels more coordinated than, you know, All Might, or most heroes are used to dealing with. Why him out of all the heroes? Because I can't help but wonder if it's symbolic. And evil? Yeah. Because he's the one and only symbol of peace and justice? Yeah, yeah. Because realistically, All Might isn't fighting all these villains simultaneously anyway, right? So it probably is a symbolic thing that they're looking for. I don't care what their reasons are. I have to face this evil. Head on! This is up to us. Let's be heroes. Yeah, this carries a lot of danger though, obviously. Are you embarrassed to lose to a child? <laughs> I love the trash talking. They look awesome. <laughs> I like how the class seems to have come to the same conclusion as Deku, even without communicating. Maybe I underestimated them. Maybe I should just show up and say something inspiring at the end. Yeah, I get a good ten minutes out of my hero form. He must be so exhausted. Hold your horses. Hello, Nezu, sir. That's me. Oh. Well, it could be a okay. mouse or a dog or a bear, though the only important thing is... I'm the principal! Okay. I thought he was a badger, so... You also have to learn not to react every time you hear of an incident. You haven't changed in all these years. It looks like you need to stay here in the lounge and relax a little while longer. The other teachers will understand. <laughs> I really do wish you'd prioritize your students over your hero work. They deserve it. This principal is making me feel so calm. So you might as well stick around and listen to some of my teaching philosophies. They could prove Great. to be useful. Great. This is turning into a lecture. What? I would love to listen to this guy talk. I feel all warm and safe <laughs> listening to him. Can I trust him? <laughs> Something about him. It's a little bit too nice. <laughs> but he's so cute. 
That could be a trick. <laughs> Damn it. All principal jokes aside, this is actually a huge moral question that's coming up through All Might because how could you ever expect him to turn his back on the suffering that he, he can see right in front of him? It's really easy to feel that and relate to his decisions to try to do everything he can. But then logically, you also recognize that he just can't. At one point, he mentioned self-sacrifice being the ultimate thing. But my instinct on that is that that's taking it too far and that that actually might do more harm than good. I think part of that comes from inaccurate self-assessment. I think a lot of people value themselves way lower than they would value others. But although it's hard to explain, I feel like that actually creates a burden because you do the world a favor by being strong, performing at your highest level, you know, giving your, your greatest output without crashing and burning. That's not a sustainable plan long term. And people don't want that for you. People don't want you to devalue yourself. They don't want you to weaken yourself because that is cause for concern. You know, like our harming ourselves, even if it's in the name of good causes, is harmful to others who care about us. Like it's really easy for me to imagine a negative feeling of a friend harming themselves for my benefit. But for some reason, when I reverse that, when I think about me harming myself for a friend, that feels fine, but I'm not accurately weighing my friend's feelings about that. I'm not weighing the negative that me hurting myself causes in the world outside of myself. And in Another aspect of that too is that you don't really do anything by stamping out immediate problems. Thinking big picture, the way that you really make an impact is by changing things structurally. And I think that it's not wrong and not inconsistent with being a moral person to pick one thing that you can do well that you can contribute. I think everybody being responsible for everything is just too much. You know, you pick your lane that's hopefully related to your gifts and you do the best you can at doing that while also trying to keep things sustainable so you don't destroy yourself in the process, right? Because nobody wants that. So in that sense, I understand why some of the teachers react negatively to All Might doing this, because actually he would be serving the world in a great way by being the best teacher he could be. And despite his noble goals, there is something incomplete about saving 800 people on his way to work, you know? But I also sympathize with All Might. It's very interesting and complicated. Anyway, back to uh, teaching philosophy. So long-winded whenever there's tea involved. I have a good history with tea drinkers on this channel, so I have high hopes. Shoji. Got them? Anything? Oh yeah, I forgot everyone's about to die. What do we do? The guy's not affected by physical attacks and can apparently teleport stuff? Black hole I'm 13. <laughs> Run to the school and tell the faculty what's going on here. <clears throat> oh no. I feel like he might not be happy about being an errand boy. It would be disgraceful for me to leave you all behind. Exactly, yeah. Use your quirk to save others. Be a real hero. That's a good point. Emergency exit makes his exit. Are you really foolish enough to strategize in front of your enemy? <laughs> Pointing out a, you know, a weird hero convention. There you go. Black hole all of them. If they knew I was a frog, they would have sent me into that fire zone over there instead of somewhere full of water. True. Good point. They probably separated us because they didn't know what we could do. So for all they know, the three of us could be super powerful. Yeah, they are being really hesitant. That proves they're a little unsure. Look at this guy. So let's talk quirks. I'll go first if you want. Obviously, I can jump high. And cling to pretty much any wall. And of course, there's my tongue. I can stick it out about 20 meters. Yeah, the world really isn't fair. Some quirks aren't one quirk, they're like 19 quirks. I'm strong, but it comes at a price. Once I use my power, I'm pretty much out of commission. It's a double edged sword until I can control it. I've got these sticky balls. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I love how proudly you said that. Very interesting. I. Not sure how useful it is <laughs> right now. Ah, don't look at me like that! This is why I said we should wait for the real heroes! My quirk is totally unfit for battle and work! No, no, no. We'll make it work. Really? We just have to figure out how to use exactly. it. Exactly. I'm starting to get bored! Let's get the this guy! Oh no, his, his sticky balls! <laughs> what the hell are these things? <laughs> I have the same reaction. <laughs> That's right. Mineta will have a long and satisfying arc towards Hero. Come on, act like on on one. You. <laughs> Interesting start. Even if I use a smash, I can't get them all at once when they're in a circle like that. And you only get one shot, really. Even though he's shaking, he's still going through with it. Yeah, this is no small action. Jump into the water full of skull villains. Delaware smash! Yeah, really choosing a power that wouldn't do that much damage. Sorry if you're from Delaware. <laughs> I 
That was amazing that you could do that from the air. Oh god. <laughs> oh no! He wins. Very clever. I love how Sue is so calm this whole time. Very giving of praise. Aww. Yeah, I was worried that this would take a dark turn here. And it might still happen, but this wasn't it. I feel great. <laughs> I feel good as always. I feel inspired by the power of conviction and friendship and sticky balls. It surprises me a little bit that they're able to put up such a good fight. Then again, these are the best of the best, right? They've been selected for their abilities and their talents. And even though it's only been a couple days, I mean, they have done a lot with All Might and Aizawa. This is the most practical focused school ever of all time. But what exactly do the villains want, I wonder? I mean, they were after All Might, but it seems like they've adjusted the plan. I'm hoping we'll get more of uh, Hands McGee in the next episode or next coming episodes. I think the standouts for me this episode were Aizawa delivering. That makes me so happy. Sue made a really nice impression on me this episode. She seems really intelligent, really cool, very level-headed. The principal, gonna keep my eye on him. <laughs> and yeah, thinking more about All Might, All Might's growing problem, the pain of being a superhero. It really hasn't been that many episodes, but I think the show's already given a lot. It's been a really good first season so far. So yeah, that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time when the battle for Universal Studios continues. Bye.